So what is the best high performance, ultra cold weather hunting base layer on the market? Well, I don't know that one, but today I'm gonna tell you about First Light's furnace. Hey, George back here with the New Hunter's Guide, and today I'm gonna tell you about First Light's 350X furnace base layers. Now, I bought these layers with my own money. This is not sponsored. Why I picked First Light, I'm gonna tell you about that momentarily. I'm also gonna tell you about the features, what it's made out of, the pros, the cons, and then my actual data that I got from experiments that I did to try to figure out if these base layers were really worth the money and were they better than everything else that I had in my inventory, because I didn't just wanna come at you with my my own opinions. So let's jump into it. First things first, why did I choose the Furnace 350 from First Light? Well, I've been looking at some high performance base layers for a while. I think base layers have been one of the weakest links in my gear setup since I've upgraded some other pieces. And I had wanted them for a while, maybe a couple years for deer hunting. But what actually pushed me over the edge to spend the money was to get them for waterfowl hunting. And the reason's this, when I went out for duck or goose hunting, Thing, man, we would drag stuff through the woods and mile or more sometimes, build our own blind, throw in decoys. By the time I sat down an hour before daylight, I'd be hot and just soaking wet and sweat. Well, even if it wasn't that cold, all that moisture would just cling to you. After you sit for a few hours, I'd get freezing and I just realized I needed something better to help me under those conditions. So what led me to First Light was that that they were one of the best brands, the best known brands for making merino wool base layers. And that's what I wanted. Some companies, they've got merino wool mixed in, so they might have 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 79%, some had more than that. But First Light's furnace was 95% merino and then just enough spandex to give you some good stretch and make it comfortable to wear. So like all wool, merino is very warm. It is also warm when wet. It maintains most of its insulative properties even when soaking wet. It is also odor resistant and it is thermally regulating, which means it helps keep you warm when it's cold and it helps keep you cool even when it starts to get warm out. You got to think about it. God designed these sheep so that even in the coldest of conditions, they could stay warm, but they also couldn't overheat when there were milder days. So this stuff works great. Now, what makes Merino wool special? Well, Merino wool has three particular qualities that are different from regular wool. And all merino wool is, is the wool from the merino sheep. That's pretty simple. But those merino sheep have wool that is very nice for base layers. And the reason is this, the merino wool has finer fibers than regular wool. Regular wool has larger, coarser fibers, whereas the merino has finer fibers, and that gives you three main benefits. Number one, those finer fibers can be warm and woven in a way that is much less itchy. In fact, it is very comfortable to wear as a next to skin layer. It goes right up against your skin. It doesn't give you the itch that regular wool has. That's what makes it viable as a base layer. Number two, those finer fibers occupy less space for the same weight. So your regular wool might be this thick, the same weight, same ounces of merino wool is going to occupy less volume. So you have a thinner layer, but it still gives you the warmth of maybe a thicker sweater. And that makes it very nice for base layers. And then the third property, which is maybe the most important of all, is that those finer fibers help wick away moisture. Because they're not as coarse and large as the regular wool fibers, there's fewer places for that moisture to get trapped. And because it's thinner, there's less distance for that moisture to travel to need to escape. So the fibers naturally pull moisture away from your body and evaporate it because they're fine, but also then because the garment is not as thick, there's less distance for that moisture to travel. So they evaporate moisture faster faster and then they keep you drier. So how does it end up working? Well, I really have been thrilled with these base layers. Now that said, I always feel like I need to mention things when I'm passionate about that they are not magical. You can still get cold, you can still get wet, you can still have a bad day in the woods. To get the best out of these layers, you need to have good mid layers and good outer layers, which will let that moisture escape and which will keep that wind off of you. But in terms of what their job is, they work.
or great. Now they come in all kind of colors. Why did I pick gray? Well, I picked the gray because one, they were out of black and they were on sale. So I wanted to get them then. They've got lots of camo colors, but I didn't want camo because I wanted to be able to wear these, especially the Henley, out to work and to the store and to wherever and just have it be more of a normal looking shirt. And the Henley actually does look pretty good in gray. It passes for casual or semi-casual wear. I can wear it a lot of different places in the winter and it just performs really nice. Now what's a Henley? It is just a fancy word for a shirt that's got the three buttons. They also make a quarter zip. I'm not as big of a fan as the quarter zip. I like the buttons. It works nice. But in the woods, these things work fabulous. They fit good. They stretch good. I usually wear a large in just about everything and a large in these fits perfectly. In fact, there's even a little bit of room under this. If I really wanted to, I could maybe wear another thinner base layer under them if I was really getting crazy about stacking layers. But I've not needed to do that yet. These work really well. They are serious pieces of gear. The Henley weighs a little over a pound and the Long Johns weigh just under a pound. We're talking about a pound for a base layer, a pound for a piece of long underwear. This set combined weighs uh, just about two pounds. Now I also got the beanie. The beanie is nice. It's a layering beanie. It's not much of an outerwear beanie. I did also get a camo version of the beanie to wear like for spring turkey season when it's warmer outside. It works really nice if you're moving and sweating. But in terms of late season stuff, it works good if you layer it under a heavy duty outer layer beanie. Now before I go any further, I need to let you guys know I did a full feature length written review blog post on these base layers in more detail that I can fit in this video. I will link to that down below in the description. I will also put links down below in the description to the base layers so that you can see them and learn more about them. So some of the key features, they got these nice thumb loops. A lot of people really like that. That way they don't get bunched up when you put on your over top layers, but also it helps keep it up onto your hand. So then your base layer stretches out over covering part of your hand, keeps you warmer, helps you get that little bit of extra bit over your hand. You can wear a glove over top of it. Works really nice. It's got the buttons. The buttons work good. What I really like is the stretch. These things are super comfortable and I really like it in the long johns. I've never been a big fan of heavy long johns because I hate it when stuff bunches up around my knees and then it hinders me sitting or walking, takes more effort or it's uncomfortable. These, despite being relatively form fitting, I don't get that issue at all. I can walk even with these super thick long johns on with almost no restriction whatsoever. They work really nice for that. I've washed them many times at this point and dry them. They have not lost their stretch or their fit at all. They fit really nice. All in all, they're a really nice piece of material, super soft. The inner lining is different from the exterior, so, so they're a little bit more rugged on the outside, but really soft on the inside. Now, before I get to the cons and the test data from my experiments, let me first invite you to hit the thumbs up button so this video can spread to more people. And let me also invite you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can see more from my channel. Now, the cons. There are some cons with it. First and foremost, they are not cheap. These things can be pricey. I got them on sale. They were still not cheap, but they do go on sale occasionally. Now, I priced everything that was on the market in this class, and First Light stuff falls right in the mid to lower range of the pricing for things that are coming from big brands like Sitka, things that are coming from brands like Smart Wool and others. Keep in mind, every brand has cheaper stuff, including First Light, but if you're looking at something that is in the 350 weight class, which which is their highest weight class, the pricing is comparable to everybody else on the market. Also to explain what that means, the 350 is 350 grams per square meter of material. So for a square meter, it's just under half a pound of weight. And so these with how much materials in them, you got just over a pound for the Henley, just under a pound for the Long Johns. Now other cons, mine came with a broken snap. So you got these nice snaps right here, they pop on and off. Mine came, one of them was broken out of the bag. So I contacted First Light, sent them a picture. They sent me a return label, sent me a new one super quick. It was no issue. Uh, and the snaps have been fine since then. I've had no problems with them. 
Number three con, and you got to be prepared for this, and that is the sheepy smell. Now, they tell me that's not what it really is, but that really is what it is. So, merino wool and all wool comes from sheep. It is a natural fiber. And there are certain oils that are in the fibers. Now, most of the time, they get the majority of those oils out in the manufacturing process, but not always. When I got the Long Johns, they were perfect. No issue whatsoever, never had any smell to them. But when I got the Henley, it seems fine. When it was dry, it was 100%, and that's the way this thing works. But then when it gets wet, especially soaking wet, you get this awful sheepy smell. So I contacted First Light. They said that is normal, that can happen. That smell will fade with laundering and use. So I went ahead and I washed them and I washed them again. And I washed them four or five times, dried them each time. Of course, you want to line dry it. Don't put these in the dryer. You don't want to risk shrinkage, especially for what they cost. And they do dry pretty quick though, because they're Merino. After the fourth or fifth wash, that smell pretty much completely faded. Uh, when they're still soaking wet, you maybe smell something that's a little different from a synthetic fiber, but that is pretty much completely faded at this point. And I've been hunting with them and wearing them, and I smell absolutely nothing. Nothing. So if you get something that does have the sheepy smell, it will go away. You just need to wash it and wash it and wear it and wash it. And you can get that with any brand. It's not unique to First Light. Anybody that has a wool or mostly wool piece, that is something that you can encounter. Now the piece of info you've probably been waiting for, the experimental data. See, when I got these, I needed to justify to myself that they were worth what I paid for them because they weren't cheap even on sale. So I wanted to do an experiment because I didn't feel like my opinion was good enough. I wanted data that shows how these worked. So I got all of the best base layers that I had. And I've got some that were Patagonia, Under Armour, Icebreaker, Cabela's, some others. And I did an experiment between those and the Furnace 350. And what I did was I took some boiling water and poured it into some disposable traveling coffee cups. I then took each base layer, wrapped that cup of water in the base layer, and then put it inside of a plastic shopping bag just the super thin ones, just to give it some windbreak resistance, like any external layer that you would wear with these. I then left them outside on a five degree Fahrenheit day, and then came back after an hour to see how much heat each one of those cups had lost. And so then, after doing that, I took all, all the different layers and I soaked them in a bucket of water till they were absolutely drenched and just dripping water. And I ran the same experiment again with the wet layers. And for both experiments, dry and wet, the first light furnace came out ahead of the pack. They beat every other base layer that I had in all of the different brands. Now, as I open this video with, that doesn't prove that this is the best base layer on the market because I wasn't able to test all the high performance comparable layers such as ones from Sitka and Smart Wool and others because they're just expensive and I couldn't get all of them. But I did shoot a video of that test and you guys can click on that one right here to watch the entire experiment and see the data and the numbers for yourself. Guys, till next time, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. God bless you and go get them in the woods.